So uh, today I thought I'd uh, change it up a little bit. Um, the last couple videos has been uh, in the woods, so I figured today I'd uh, I'd do one in the kitchen. Um, I uh, haven't been uh, making as many videos as I had hoped. Been uh, extremely busy with work the last uh, few months, so. But uh, today's Sunday, and I figured I'd make myself a little treat. Uh, Lent's over. Easter was last weekend, so today I'm going to show you guys how to make gluten-free, dairy-free um, onion rings and uh, fish and chips. So, you know, uh, when I first went, uh, I had dis discovered that I had a gluten allergy, a uh, severe gluten allergy. Uh, I found it really hard to, uh, to have those uh, comfort foods, I guess, that we all... I enjoy to have every now and then. So uh, one of them was uh, onion rings, which is virtually impossible to find anywhere. I haven't found a single uh, place where you can buy gluten-free, dairy-free onion rings. So I decided to make my own, um, uh, I guess over a year ago. So I'll show you guys how I do it. Um, normally I have large onions, so today it's going to end up being more like onion scoops instead of onion rings because these are... Uh, this is all I had. I forgot. To, I just did the groceries and forgot to get a large onion. But usually you, you want to have a, one of those large uh, Spanish onions. And I thought I had one in the fridge, but I guess I didn't. Um, so yeah, you, you just peel your onions. And uh, the, the reason I'm, I'm starting with the onions and not the batter is because the key to making onion rings is to get your onions in ice cold water as, uh, as quick as you can. And, and as long as you can. So uh, usually what I do is I start by prepping my onions, put my onions in ice cold water, and what it does is it, it gets rid of that thin film um, that's on the outside of the, the onion. Um, and this little thin film thing, and uh, there's kind of a little skin um, between the layers of the onion. And that ice cold water uh, somehow washes it, so uh, it enables the batter to stick to it better. And uh, this is something uh, I've learned over time. Uh, uh, first time we, I, I, I made these, um, the batter didn't stick to them at all. So, uh, and of course we we're kind of clueless as to why why this was so. So I got some ice cold water here uh, from the tap. Um, if you get some ice, you want to put some ice in there. It, it does help a little bit. Um, and just put your, so what I'm making is just onion scoops. So they're just little wedge pieces. Stick it in there um, and you'll see after what I do with them. And I uh, try to stay away from the, the core. So just pieces about this size. Stick them in the cold water. Throw it at the core. Um, and you want to let these sit sometimes as, as long as an hour if you can. Longer the better. Uh, but I would say after an hour or two, you're, you're good to go. <clears throat> so, um, so this batter I'm making today is, uh, it says uh, gluten-free and dairy-free batter. Um, it's, it's a little bit like a traditional beer batter, I guess, in, in taste. But uh, uh, over time, you know, I've, I've played with different spices and tried different things and, and uh, determined what was the, the best mix of uh, spices and whatnot to, um, to get. Sorry about that shake, guys. Uh, so I'm in, uh, <clears throat> I'm in my uh, home away from home at work here uh, where I stay when I'm working. And... Uh, so this is not my 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 house. This is uh, my uh, I guess my work house. So um, so the ingredients are pretty simple, dead simple. Uh, one egg, um, and then I use this rice milk, rice cream. It, it doesn't add really a taste to the uh, batter, but it um, uh, it helps to get the right consistency and whatnot. And then I use this uh, 
gluten-free uh, biscuit mix from Betty Crocker. Uh, amazing, works great. I've uh, been using this for this batter for at least two years now. And uh, so, and then you just need a whisk. And uh, the secret spice <laughs> is actually Clubhouse um, salad herb. Um, salad herbs. So it's got a little bit of lemon in there and uh, let's see, uh, dehydrated garlic, onion, sugar, um, spices and herbs, contains mustard, basil, tarragon, thyme, salt, um, yeah the rest is just a bunch of preservatives and crap that I wish wasn't in it but hey. Um, so, so that's the spice and uh, just a measuring cup I take about a I say about because you have to adjust your consistency to get it just to that right uh, consistency so there's my onion scoops there I'll just let them cool cool down and wash themselves have a little bath in that water um, so I just measure out you know about a like I said a cup and then uh, throw it into your mixing bowl. Crack your egg in there. And then uh, a little less like uh, than a cup of uh, milk. So typically what I do is I, I just go just a little bit under the brim. Um, Mix that in here. Then I just use a whisk. So you can see, just basically, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm at my home away from home here, so I don't have my proper camera and tripod. And so I just get my phone taped to the back of the chair here. <laughs> eh. So I just whisk it up really good. Then Check your consistency. So, um, try to get you guys to see what it looks like here. So it's basically just a a nice fluffy batter. Just whisk it up. So this is a little thin for the onion rings. So just laying down the chair again. Uh, so for the onion rings you want a little bit thicker and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some uh, um, fish and chips so for the fish and chips you want it a little bit thinner so, <laughs> so what I do is I, I, I usually start do my onion rings first in the batter get this nice thick batter going and then I'll just, uh, I just dilute a little bit for the, the fish. If you have a thick batter for your fish, it still works great, but it gets a little, a little fattening. But, um, of course, your onion rings just won't be onion rings if you don't have a thick batter, because you, then you just get a, a thin coating on there. But that, that's basically what onion rings are. It's uh, pancake onions. Uh, so, um, so I'll just fire up the uh, the fryer here and uh, be right back. So apologies for the glare off the window here. As I said, I don't have my good camera equipment, and I don't even know if this video is going to turn out good. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys the uh, the fryer I use. It's a it's basically a T fowl fryer, um, and it's it's quite good. Uh, I got this a couple years ago and uh, has a nice unpluggable piece on the back here so you can pretty much wash all the parts of this thing. Uh, many of the parts can go right into your dishwasher so works great. Then it has a, a pretty cool tub here which uh, at the bottom has a nice, see that filter down there? So, 
Um, what it allows us to do is to just uh, drain all the oil and and drop it into this basin here. So the this machine here um, helps to filter that oil. So every time you uh, you basically have some nice clean oil uh, to start from. Uh, of course, over time it does get dark, and you gotta throw it away and change your oil. But uh, works pretty good. So I use uh, canola oil. Um, tried different oils, and I find that's that's one of the better uh, the oils. I would use peanut oil, but it's very expensive. Um, or even uh, something like an avocado oil, but like I said, they're really expensive. So, so this is uh, quality prices. Works out pretty good. So I just pour my oil back in there. Turn this this thing on. Then you gotta get it nice and hot. Um, and that's what's good about this fryer. Um, it. It tends, it, it warms up really, really, it gets really, really hot, so, um, and that's what you need to get yourself, so it comes with this nice basket, so you, you need this, this oil to get really hot uh, in order to get um, a good quality fry. Um, if your, your fryer doesn't get very hot, the oil gets into the, into your food and it just gets really greasy and it's just, just disgusting, so. Alright, so how much spices do I put in? How much of this stuff do I put in? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, you count the shakes. Eh, maybe that was 14 shakes, I guess. So, yeah, so that's what I do. I just kind of eye it and gives it nice flavor I find um, so that'll be for the onion scoops find my batter's a little thin just add a little bit more uh, biscuit in it thicken it up a little bit get a good mix some fresh fresh cod fillets so what you would do with the cod is uh, always smell your fish if it's fresh it shouldn't smell it shouldn't stink and uh, I've had this before it's nice and fresh so nice piece there so I usually cut it up in uh, in smaller pieces. This one I'll probably do like three, three pieces. Oh, yay big. That nice fish, nice fresh, fresh cod. You can use frozen cod also. Um, we tend to do that all often, but what tends to happen is frozen cod, um, when you leave it on thaw, it breaks apart, it falls apart, whereas the fresh fish doesn't fall apart as well. Um, and this is going to be a lot tastier than the frozen cod. So you can use, like I said, frozen cod. Uh, it's about half the price of the fresh stuff, but it's not quite the same quality. Um, and then uh, usually what I do is I, I use uh, two types of potatoes. Uh, I either use red potatoes, so Norlands or um, forget the other kind, and these Yukon Golds. Uh, today I'm going to use the Yukon Gold. And what I find is really great about these Yukon Golds is they uh, they turn into a nice uh, brown color as they cook so and you'll see that 
that really nice. So I'm by myself today, so I'm just going to have one. One potato should be enough. No big deal. While I'm doing this, my oils get nice and warm. So my batter is thickening up a little bit. Letting it sit like this. So in any anybody can do this at their home. Pretty like as you can see, I don't have any any fancy ingredients. Just some gluten-free biscuit, right? And and everything else is just standard stuff. Uh, you can use water instead of this rice milk. It doesn't have to be rice milk. For my <coughs> fries, uh, I usually just make wedges with these, nice thick wedges. Um, Pretty simple. I like to keep it simple. So just cut your potato over there and so I make slices and then just cut them up and I get these nice wedges. That's it. Nice and simple. So now uh I just gotta drain the water from my onion scoops. So this is something kind of interesting. Uh, I've, like I said, we've been doing this myself and uh, my roommate, who used to own, uh, used to own a canteen. So he's big, big on frying stuff. Uh, grew up with, you know, fries and stuff like that. So, uh, so. And he is not gluten free, <laughs> and never will be. <laughs> He's he loves his gluten. So, uh, but he absolutely loves these uh, these fish and chips and these uh, onion rings. So, uh, if you're worried that oh it's gluten free, it doesn't taste good, <laughs> it's not the case. It tastes uh, as good as anything with gluten in it. In fact, he, I make uh, pancakes every now and then with this pancake mix, and he absolutely loves those too. So, so I'm just patting down my onion scoops, get them nice and nice and dry. I want them to just pick up as much batter as I can. Now, I didn't soak them very long. Uh, like I said, usually I go an hour, but today I'm making this video, so I'm just going through the steps here. So I just went through, patted them all. And uh, something kind of neat for you guys that are gluten free and uh, miss Kentucky Fried Chicken. Um, I also make my own KFC. There's a mix for it. And uh, I'll make a video at some point showing you the mix and all the ingredients. But <clears throat> it's, uh, it's, a close, it's a close copycat recipe. The only difference is the real KFC recipe calls for dehydrated uh, milk powder. Obviously, I'm dairy free, I'm very allergic to dairy, so I can't use that. So that's that's about the uh, the big difference. However, the taste is uh, very close, and my roommate finds it just as good, if not better, than KFC. So, um, so I'll show. I'll make a video. How I make this stuff uh, one of these days, um, but you can go online and just Google copycat KFC recipe, and you'll find a bunch of different recipes. Um, so that is uh, very doable if you're gluten free and and you miss KFC as I do. Um, so um, yeah, I don't eat fried foods all the time. I mean, it's it's not a, a big part of my actually because I have MCS, I I tend to eat very very healthy. A lot of fruit, vegetables, uh, meats, not much uh, junk food. Um, although I do have a weakness for chips, <laughs> potato chips. So, so I'll show you the some point. All right. So now that I got my my onions, patted down onion scoops. 
you can imagine that these normally I usually make in some nice big fat rings but I just uh, take these and I just dump them in my batter like this just dump them in there so you want to do uh, your onion rings before you do your fish never fish before onion rings the reason is kind of obvious I guess but uh, um, if you put your fish in here, you're going to have fishy onion rings, which will taste kind of gross. But if you put your onion rings in first, you'll have oniony fish, which tastes pretty good. So, always do the onion rings first. That's the so my order in the in the uh, the food here is usually I do onion rings first, then I'll do the fish uh, in the in the batter, and then the last thing I'll do is I'll throw in the fries and. Uh, so that'd be usually well this this I know it's not a lot of onion rings but they they have to be separated in the fryer so this will probably take me a couple um, batches to, to do so I'll show you guys you know, I'm just mixing them up and I just use a, a pair of thongs here to scoop them out and uh, get them in there mixed really good and then I'll show you guys uh, dropping them in the fryer I'm trying to hold my phone here and do this, so I'm not sure it's going to be the best video quality, but you can see my fryer there. Oil's nice and hot. Um, so, and I just grab my onion scoops. Make sure I got a nice little bit of batter on them, not too much, and I just drop them in one by one. There it goes. Makes like a little boat. Floats around in there. And you just, just wanna hope you guys are seeing this good. You just drop them in like that and they float up. I got my onion rings there just floating around. And you wanna just flip them as they get nice and golden brown. And get both sides nice and covered. I don't know if you guys can see that. Just flipping them. And they don't spend a whole lot of time, a couple minutes in there. I just judge by eye when they get to the right color. And uh, so you get you get these all nice and crispy and golden brown. And then that's what they look like. those drip a little bit so what do I eat with my uh, onion scoops well I'm I'm one of these guys who loves mayo um, I'm French of course so I have mayo on my fries and I'll show you guys what I do here so a couple forkfuls of, of mayo and I always use uh, Good stuff, Hellman's olive oil. Now, uh, recently, my wife and I just uh, discovered this, uh, um, it's called a, anyways, it's homemade mayo. So, I'm going to be experimenting with that, and I'll show you guys how I make that at some point. But, uh, I just put a little bit of ketchup in there, and for onion rings, uh, onion scoops this is just delicious and uh, so, and that's what I made just a nice basically this is the the, uh, the Burger King secret sauce <laughs> that's what they put on their burger half ketchup half man 
This is another mayo I make, which is just basically the same thing, Hellman's, and I use a nice mustard, um, nice whole grain mustard, a little bit of mustard, mustard mayo, great on your fries. So what do these things look like? Well, here it is, onion scoop, a little bit of ketchup mayo, mmm, so good. Mm. So for the fish, I just take the piece of fish, chop them right in the batter, and uh, let them soak. Get a dip full of that batter. <clears throat> this will just be absolutely delicious. And you want to get them nice, nice and full of the bat, you know. I want them to pick up a nice bit of batter there. And there's this batter can be used also for um, um, I've done some red peppers, slices of red peppers in there. Uh, done some zucchini in there. Um, what else have I done in there? Brussels sprouts actually were pretty good. Um, Fried up in the, in the same this same batter, so I sometimes change it up, put different spices in, whatnot. But uh, it's basically the same base uh, with the bisquick. Um, something else that's pretty good is uh, the shrimps in this uh, panko platter. So this is uh, this is also pretty good. I every now and then I'll, I'll change it up and have this. Um, as far as fish. Calamari, um, done up in a thinner version of this batter, is just delicious. Uh, calamari, you need a really warm oil to get it nice and crispy. The first time I did it was the, the best calamari I'd had in my life, actually. Um, they were just uh, very crispy, not rubbery, like uh, typically they are in the restaurants. Also, um, do a lot of uh, scallops in this batter and they're just out of this world delicious uh, the scallops are are probably one of my favorite done up in this batter and you get your pieces of fish here get them nice full batter drip them a little bit and drop them in there you go drip them a little bit right in there so unfortunately um, the uh, the batter came off the fish because I didn't pat it down dry so uh, very important pat down your fish with some paper towel before you fry it Mind you, it is still delicious. Um, so this is what the onion scoops turn out like. They're really nice. And right now I got a batch of fries in the fryer. And I'm just trying to get them to that nice golden brown color, see? And that's what's great with these Yukon Golds. They get really beautiful color and the taste is amazing the frying process um, does something to the sugars and the uh, potato anyways they they turn out like really sweet and uh, so this these are just absolutely the best fries and I uh, as far as spices on the fries uh, sometimes I'll do KFC style potato wedges you know and I'll just I'll put these um, these fries in that in that KFC mix that I was talking about, and uh, but usually I'll just uh, throw some uh, some coarse salt on them. So there we have it. I'll get my fries, my onion scoops, and my fish. Didn't turn out perfect with the batter, but trust me, the taste is pretty much perfect. So 
hope you enjoyed this video. Um, let me know if you uh, if you like more to see more of this type of type of video, um, and uh, in the comment section. And, um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and um, I don't like I said I don't eat a whole lot of fried foods, uh, but uh, I do enjoy it every now and then. And I can't go to a restaurant like you guys who eat gluten and, and have it any day uh, of the week. So I pretty got pretty much got to make my own. Uh, so <clears throat> um, in the in the next little while, uh, I'll be making some videos um, about um, some of the inventions that I'm working on. Um, Right now they're still hush hush, but um, one of them is got to do with Bitcoin mining. So if you're into that or into trading bitcoins, um, once we make that product public, I will uh, make a video on it explaining what we did and um, what what's been going on in the last six months. So that's that's been taking up quite a bit of my time. The other thing's been taking up. Quite a bit of my time is we just moved. We sold our cottage. Where uh, the uh, there's a few videos on this channel that that were made there. So we sold that beautiful cottage, um, and uh, <clears throat> we're living in a, in a temporary home right now, renting a home while we're building our dream home. So um, that should be interesting. Um, um, so throughout the summer and the fall, I'm hoping to post uh, some clues, some tips on how to save money on building your house and things like that, how to build a really energy efficient house. My house is going to be super energy efficient. Um, also, uh, I'm building a Back to Eden garden. So if you don't know what that is, uh, check out my playlist and you'll see some videos there. Uh, one by Paul Gucci and a, another um, guy, uh, his name's Mark. And he runs a channel. I am growing organic, so I, I'm basically combining the thoughts of the two of these uh, wise gardeners into uh, hopefully a garden that will be uh, a quicker uh, development than Paul Gucci's. Paul Gucci has probably one of the best gardens in the world, uh, um, but he's been just you know slowly improving it over time. So I'm trying to kickstart my garden. And, and get to where Paul's at today in, in a few less years. So, so I'll be doing some gardening videos around that. Also, uh, I my land has some, uh, I call it a water feature because it's uh, spring, um, a little brook in the spring, it kind of dries up in the summer. Um, but there is a pond there that uh, that does have water in it most of, most of the year. So I hope to <clears throat> do something with this pond, maybe some some fish in it uh, at some point. Um, also, uh, be doing some more work around uh, woodworking, uh, and I I have an invention there that, that uh, I built with my brother. It was a sawmill uh, we built a few years ago, and uh, so I hope to make a a more heavy duty, more commercialized version of this sawmill. Um, and start sharing some some of those things with you guys. Also, we'll be making a, uh, a kiln for drying wood. And uh, in around this Bitcoin stuff, I'm I'm just so many ideas are coming out. Uh, so hopefully, I'll get to uh, develop some of these uh, products um, in, in around Bitcoin mining. So. Um, yeah, so if you are interested in any, any of those things, uh, click subscribe to my channel. Uh, I do hope to someday spend a uh, bit more time doing this YouTube stuff, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, this will allow me to generate a little bit of income to not necessarily to fill my pockets, but to uh, um, to put forward for these uh, some of these ideas and inventions that I'm I'm uh, looking to build. So. Uh, just a hint, I plan to one day build a sawmill that works off of sawdust. So, yeah, and it's totally doable, and I will someday do it. So that's one of the things I'm trying to, to fund with this uh, YouTube channel. So, um, And, uh, of course, I because it's jack-of-all issue, I've dealt with many issues in my life, 
uh, various things like uh, I've one of my sons, uh, my second son, he died. He was born with a uh, genetic uh, condition, so he died. My first son uh, has hydrocephalus, but he's been miraculously, I guess you could say, uh, cured from it. Um, he still has his shunt, but it's disconnected. And uh, so I'll make a video with that at some point uh, and about my son. And so, um, so various issues that people have in life, grief. Um, also, um, speaking about the importance of God in your life. So, a um, little bit of everything. That's, that's what you're going to get from my channel. So, uh, and some cooking, of course, every now and then. So, I hope you, uh, hope you like this. Bye for now. Not complete without cream soda. The fries. Mm. A bit of fish. <laughs>